All right, hi everybody. So my name is DJ Cass and I am the Polar Trek teacher for um, Dr. Crump and Dr. George Kling's microbial diversity in freshwater systems expedition going up to Tulik mid-June to mid-July. And this is Dr. Crump. Would you like to tell us more about your research that we're going to be, or I'm going to be helping you with up north? Yes, we have a long-term research project studying the biodiversity of microbes, of bacteria and archaea and little single-celled organisms in freshwater systems on the north slope of Alaska. And those freshwater systems are lakes and streams and rivers. And uh, we're really interested in what controls the types of bacteria and other microbes that live in these environments. And the reason we're interested in that is because microbes, microbes kind of rule the world. They really do. They kind of do. <laughs> For you sure. Know, they are responsible for most of the element cycling on the planet. So where the carbon goes and what happens to it, where the nitrogen goes, where the phosphorus goes, a lot of that's controlled by microbes. And it's especially true in aquatic systems like rivers and oceans. The microbes are particularly important. And so we're interested in who those organisms are and how they're distributed across the landscape. And you had mentioned in our, in our talks the last couple of days um, that we are sampling at different parts of the watershed. For example, the lakes, streams, um, and where soil is traveling through, or water is traveling through water, like starting with rain, correct? Right. Okay. And then when we are in the field, um, what does it look like when we're sampling in these different water areas? Well, uh, there's a bunch of different uh, sampling campaigns, and one of them is along this watershed of the big lake that we that our camp is on, Tulik Lake. Mm -hmm. The Tulik Lake watershed is loaded with different lakes and streams, and we sample all of them in a couple day campaign, wow. three times a summer. So we take a helicopter, Yay. And we fly <laughs> to the top of the watershed, and the helicopter drops us off with our backpacks and all of our sampling gear. And we just start walking down the watershed. And we stop at a lake, and we get a sample. And we, we walk along with a team of people who have a, a, a floating a, a raft, a blow-up boat. Right? Nice. And so uh, two, two people get on the boat and paddle out into the lake and take a whole bunch of different samples, including samples for us. Cool. And they bring it back, and then we filter it and do the work we need to do with those samples. Very nice. And we just follow along with them down this chain of lakes, and we stop at streams and sample streams also. Very and cool. And we carry our samples all the way back <laughs> to camp. Awesome. And so once they, the samples are finished at camp and they're sent to your lab here, you process, you process them and filter them for all of the different DNA in them, correct? Right. That's the only way to identify the bacteria. Got it. And the other microbes. You know, they all kind of look the same under the microscope, mm -hmm. but they're very diverse. I mean, lots of different species. They just all look like little balls under a microscope, right? <laughs> Can't tell what they yeah. are. So the only way to tell the difference is through DNA sequencing. Very cool. So we, up in Alaska, we extract the DNA from these microbes and purify it and put it in little tubes, and then we mail it back to Oregon. And, <laughs> and it gets back to Oregon. And here we do uh, work to get the sequences of those DNA, the code. Mm -hmm. And we can read that code and figure out what types of bacteria are in the water. And you have like an encyclopedia essentially, or not a, or I guess a database? Yeah, that that's you're what we call it a database. Comparing all of the sequences that you find too to be able to find what kind each one is, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. That's right, you can't read them like, like you can read a book, you know, you get this, it's a code, right? So you gotta mm -hmm. take that code and find the best match in a database and say, oh, it matches this sequence the best and that's this kind of organism. Very cool. And you said that when you're analyzing DNA from an environmental area that was called metagenomics? Metagenomics, yeah. Metagenomics. Right? Yep, that's right. Okay. So when you do a metagenomics, you're looking at 
all the genes. Got it. So not just the bacteria? So not just the bacteria. Well, the thing I was talking about before, we really only just look at one gene. Got which it. is this gene that's popular for fingerprint. They call it kind of like a fingerprint gene. Okay. All microbes have it. All organisms have this gene, right? Got it. And it's comparable. So we just we just do DNA sequencing on that gene from all the different organisms in a sample and Got figure it. out what they all are. But if you want to figure out what those organisms are capable of doing, it's you gotta, matter. that's, that's <laughs> metagenomics. You know, you can find out who Got they it. are, but that doesn't mean you know what they do. You know what they're. Right. What their ecology is. Gotcha. And you can describe their ecology a lot better if you know what genes those organisms are carrying around with them. Very cool. So that's what metagenomics does. And then, so going back to the watershed idea, you had mentioned that there is a low diversity, like in the exit streams of the lake, but a very high diversity of bacteria or of microbes in the soil towards like the top of a watershed. Did mm -hmm. I remember that correctly? Yeah, that's right. D diversity is, one way of measuring diversity is the number of species, right? Mm -hmm. When you think about a very, like a, a, a farm field, um, it's a very low diversity, right? Because there's like one crop and then there's some weeds and like that's it. But you go to a, like a natural uh, tundra, there's just hundreds of different species, very diverse. Right. Um, in microbes, they get the same thing. So if okay. you go into a soil, they're very complex, and there's like all kinds of different surfaces and different chemistry, and it's a very complicated environment. So you get a lot of different types of bacteria in there. Got it. So they're diverse. But when that water in the soil spills out into a stream, that environment becomes more simple. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that diversity goes away, and it, the diversity becomes more focused on a smaller number of... Got it. Organisms. Got it. And then in a lake, it gets even more uh, simple. Very cool. So the diversity decreases as you go down slope. Got it. And then, so col you collect the water samples in Tulik, you extract the DNA from them, still in Tulik, send them in a, you said a dry nitro li liquid nitrogen box liquid over to nitrogen. Oregon? <laughs> yeah, liquid nitrogen dry shipper. Nice. Um, a safe shipper. Ooh. And then when they get here, you use PCR to essentially make like thousands of copies of the DNA that you received. Um, and so with PCR, you're amplifying that DNA, correct? Yeah, that's the term that we use to make a lot of copies of that okay. fingerprint gene. Got it. Using PCR. And then once the PCRs are done, you send the ones that were positive to the DNA sequencer person? That's right. Okay. So we take this, the, the pieces of DNA from all different samples, um, mix them together, and send them to the sequencer, and they do the sequencing, and then they send us the data. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's and the procedure. Very cool. Any other things that you would like to add that I haven't mentioned yet? <laughs> um. I'm not sure. You know, I guess it's a really interesting place to work up mm -hmm. on the north slope of Alaska um, because it's 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 a relatively simple environment. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all tundra. There's permafrost underneath everything. Right? Okay. So the soils are only about this deep, and then it's frozen below that. Right. So gotcha. it's a sort of small area for uh, the biology to actually function. So it makes it kind of a simple system. Since there's a short, since there's no soil, there's no trees there. I don't know. All the, all the plants are really short, mm -hmm. um, and it's a very clean environment, I guess. And the lakes are very blue, and there isn't nice. the kind of low productivity. They're not, not they're not green lakes. They're very blue lakes. Got it. Very clean and interesting, and uh, just sort of the perfect natural experiments in ecology. Not too many people there. around there except for us. <laughs> yeah, there's very few people um, and so there isn't a lot of people messing up your experiments or messing up your sampling sites. Very cool. And we, the, uh, the thing we have to thank for that is, is, is the mosquitoes. Really. <laughs> so mosquitoes uh. keep people from wanting to go. 
yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> my old advisor used to say that if it weren't for the mosquitoes, we wouldn't even be able to do research up here because wow. it would be mobbed with people because it's so lovely. You know, people would build houses and buildings up there. And, right. But the mosquitoes are so awful. Like, they're awful at the nicest time of year. But when <laughs> you course. really want to go. Right. Yeah, I've heard that they have the highest concentration of mosquitoes on the planet during the summer. Wow, Does that sound that. about accurate? <laughs> it's pretty impressive. They're, they're very, not very talented mosquitoes though. They're big, bumbly mosquitoes and they, they like, they land on you and they walk around a little bit and maybe they'll decide to sting you. So you can kill them by just kind of going, <laughs> that's it. But nothing like the mosquitoes on the East Coast. Got it. <laughs> they bite before they land. Right. <laughs> Yay, mosquitoes. And then your other PI, Dr. George Kling, you right. had mentioned that he does bacteria productivity. He's, Could you tell me more about that? All right. So on our project, he's measuring, he's taking charge of measuring bacterial productivity, which is bacterial growth rate okay. in the samples that we collect. Got it. But he also manages all of the chemistry measurements Got it. and the physical measurements like salinity, like temperature. So his lab measures nutrients and um, mm. uh, conductivity and all the things that you need to know about the water that the microbes are living in. Got it. Um, yeah. Very cool. That's his role in the project. Well, we're going to be heading up June 16th, our truck is driving up with all of our equipment and looking forward to seeing you again then. <laughs> right. Looking forward to it. Life all right. Works.